my tattoo style. Um, it definitely has like a kind of a traditional influence, but I don't really call it traditional. Some people would. I just do tattoos. I just, I don't really even care to put my tattoos in any kind of category of, of you know, realism or fucking new school or traditional. I mean, people say traditional, but I, I'd rather just not even be categorized in it. I just do tattoos. I like my tattoos to stand out. I like people to know that I did it and, and make it, you know, unique and true to myself. I guess I was about 11 years old and my mom told us, uh, took me and my, my younger brother and my older brother and told us that we were going to an indoor swimming pool. And uh, so we all jump in the car and we're ready to go swimming and we're driving. It's the middle of the winter and we love swimming and we're going to an indoor pool. And we're talking about who can do the biggest cannonball and who can do this and who can do that. And we get there and we pull up to this big white building and, um, and we run inside looking for the swimming pool and these dudes in white coats run out and bum rush us and um, it turned out it wasn't a swimming pool it was a mental hospital well I went on like that for a number of years like I fucking I got to a point where I didn't want to be doing what I was doing but I was already too deep in it and I couldn't stop in in 96 my little brother um, passed out drunk in an abandoned building and someone lit it on fire and he died in an abandoned building. It was like at that point that like I had completely like I had completely let go of any type of connection to this world that I cared about. Like it was fucking gone. And um, and I just went on basically like kind of a suicide mission. I got arrested September 8th, 2005. And I was sitting in a jail cell and I was fucking terrified like I was more afraid than I'd ever been in my life like I can't even imagine like that fear I can't even bring it back into recollection how afraid I was and it wasn't because they had just come and told me that I was gonna go to prison it was um, they had actually just come and told me they were releasing me and I knew what was gonna happen whenever I got out of jail like I was gonna go right back to the fucking drugs. I was gonna go right back to doing the exact same thing I was doing because I'd been in that exact same situation plenty of times where I said I'm never doing this again. I'm gonna get my life straight. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that and every time I didn't. And so I was sitting there and I was terrified because I knew I was gonna die. When it all comes down to it, you know, it really is a pretty amazing life, you know, that we get to have and what we get to do. It, even even after, you know, after the day's done and we're beat and we've been drawing all day and we've been tattooing all day and we barely have any time for our families and, and our, our self, you know, we don't even get any self time, you know, but at the end of the day, I think it's worth it. Well, right now, I have, I have a house in Ash, or I have a house in Philly and I tattoo, right now I'm tattooing kind of, I have a private studio at my house in Philly, but I also go and tattoo at a street shop, um, Liberty Tattoo, Northern Liberty Tattoo in Philly. And then I also have a house in Asheville, like secluded, I have one neighbor, fucking amazing house that I got as kind of like a hideout, like to go get away from everything and focus on my art and my painting. And, and trying to kind of grow a little bit in what I'm doing and try and take it to the next level. I think it's a bad idea to think that you're gonna go out and travel and meet all these awesome tattooers when you're doing shitty tattoos. Or if you're tattooing at a convention and you suck, that's not gonna be good. You wanna get your skills up, you know? Right. And you can do that at home. 